Our first recipe is tagliatelle al peperoncino, tagliatelle pasta with parsley and olive oil, serving four. The ingredients are two teaspoons red pepper flakes, one and one quarter cups or six ounces all-purpose flour, one half cup or two and one half ounces semolina flour, two extra large eggs, two teaspoons olive oil, and a pinch of salt. For the sauce, one cup or two ounces Italian parsley, leaves only, and one half cup or four ounces olive oil. Today we make, the recipe of the day is a tagliatelle with hot pepper, with peperoncino. Something that you can uh, really eat during winter time or I would say November, October when it's a kind of uh, little cold in Italy. The ingredients of today are hot pepper in flakes like this, flour, like all purpose, semolino, eggs, a little extra virgin oil, uh, pretty green, yes, and garlic chopped, and nice parsley. Of course, a little salt. Okay, first of all, we put some of uh, the hot pepper in the mortar. And using the pestle, we operate in this way. The, the action is a kind of spinning, you know, the hot pepper like this, a little, oh my god, <coughs> it's pretty hard. You can start sneezing as well. You, we can incorporate a little salt because the, the pasta that we're going to make needs some salt. You know, Genoa is famous for, his, for its pesto and basically the original pesto was made using the mortar and the pestle and using fresh basil, oil, pine nuts, garlic, parmesan cheese. So if you want to buy a mortar like this, you can make pesto like the original one. And now we pour on uh, this little plate. Like this. And we spice up our tagliatelle. Okay. See that? Really pretty. Okay. Right now we start making the dough, the pasta dough, like we did several times before. Simply using flour that we sift. It's a little different today because we use semolino flour as well, which is a little yellow. You see the difference? Yellow and white. Semolino flour comes from a durum wheat, which is a primarily the wheat cultivated in south and center of Italy. It's the one used for uh, dry pasta, and it's pretty, it's pretty good for a fresh pasta. Okay, today we have a little volcano. Okay, let's go with the eggs. Okay. Our fork. We start beating the eggs like this, and we add the hot pepper slowly like this. It's a nice game. Try not to lose the control of the dough. Okay. Using the spatula, we build up the dough again. Maybe put a little oil, it's always good. It's 
See, when you do this, you can learn how to fix your bathroom. You can, you know, for tile, you can put the tiles. You have a second job. Okay. Okay. Some flour to work a little bit, much better. Okay, like this. After this, we made the pasta, we serve it with a pretty good simple recipe, aglio, olio, and peperoncino. It's garlic, oil, and a little bit of hot pepper. We should be careful not to use a lot of hot pepper because this is already powerful. It's pretty strong already. So that's why we, we can make it during winter time. Okay. And this is ready. A little rolling. Here we go. So the dough is ready. Get rid of this, we don't need this, we don't need this. Oh, where is my handle? Oh, it's right here. Okay. Okay. Oh, I can, you can see the, the hot pepper coming through it. We fold one time, maybe a couple of times, so it's more homogeneous. Like this, a little slide on the, the flour. We do it again. Okay. Maybe another time. Flour. Ah. How you how you say it's pungent? I can smell the paper, the peperoncino, the hot pepper. Peperoncino is cultivated in Italy, really, all over the the country, but especially especially in the center and the south, and it's really important for uh, many recipes, especially when you talk about game like wild boar, venison. And also like normal chicken with pepperoni or uh, 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 the olives. And it's really good for your cured meat. For example, guanciale, which is the, the pork jowl. It's good for pancetta. Every cured meat has a little bit of hot pepper. You know, it gives you a little twist. Okay. Getting thinner and thinner. That's one side. Then we have the other one. I go thinner this way. More flour. Okay. Yeah, this is the, the right length of a tagliatelle. It's thick enough or thin enough, it depends on the point of view. Now we do the other one. And then we go cutting tagliatelle with a crank machine. Okay. I wonder if it's possible to show to the camera how nice the pepper is like basically smashed into the into the, the dough so you see the flakes there are no flakes no more it's basically they look like uh, spots it's really nice okay now we cut the tagliatelle we have the attachment 
Yes. Everything goes? Yep. And the flower on top. Over here. Okay, let's see how nice they come. Woohoo! Like Niagara Falls. Beautiful. And we make our, you know, classic nest like this. Then we make another one, just in case we want to check double. Come on. Okay, pretty good. Another nest. Oh, uh, yep. Here we are. Okay, now we wait just a few minutes until it gets a little bit drier and we cook in a, the normal classic way in hot water with some salt inside and the sauce is going to be uh, aglio olio and peperoncino. Stay with us. So this is our beautiful pasta with hot pepper, peperoncino. Look at that. It's really fresh, just made. Now we're going to drop into the boiling water that's behind me, like this, like a little one nest, and the other one, like this, okay? That's uh, boiling water, we add a little salt, like this, and we just mix it up a little bit so it doesn't get sticky. Yeah, the first thing to do when you pour the, the fresh pasta into hot water is moving a little bit like this. So it gets more, you know, uniform into the water. Look, it's already beautiful. This fresh pasta takes about three minutes to get al dente. So we better start preparing our easy sauce, which is aglio olio and peperoncino. So we have this, you know, pan right on the, on the fire. We pour the oil, extra virgin, of course, like this. We should be really careful because of the temperature. So we heat it up a little bit, and then we pour the garlic, chopped garlic. And we take it away from the flame, otherwise we burn the garlic. Okay, like this. We put it back on the flame when we have uh, the pasta ready. Now we chop some fresh parsley that we need to put on top and into the sauce. We, we eliminate the stem. We just go use only the leaves. Parsley is a fresh herb you can find in Italy all year round. There is a say which is stai uh, mezzo come il prezzemolo. It means you are everywhere like parsley. When you mean, you know, indicate the person is always, you know, you know, chasing you behind you, you know, disturbing you almost. Yeah, it's really an uh, all-purpose fresh herb. You can use it for, you know, from this simple recipe like aglio, olio, and peperoncino. You can use it for any kind of. Um, um, salad in every kind of uh, sauce. You can make pesto with parsley. It's a kind of you know winter pesto. Like this. Okay. Okay. Let's check the pasta. Maybe it's uh, like halfway. Okay. Hmm, good color. 
When the pasta is cooked, you can see the hot pepper inside much better. Okay, let's taste. Mm. Okay, um, I hope it's possible to see how wrinkled this pasta is. Looks like a little bit like tormented. So it's different, it's pretty good, it's much better. When you cook the pasta right away after a few minutes, it's different than uh, the pasta you buy or you make like two, one or two days ahead. It's much better. What's the best way to check if the pasta is done? This one. Hmm. Almost done. Okay. Just a few seconds and we start. We do this, we drain, put in a, the pot with the garlic. Like this. Okay. We toss a little bit, like this, if you wish you can add a little of the water so you will have a little more starch and the result is a kind of creamy sauce, poor sauce but you know always good. That's a classic. when you. When you are a student at university or in college, you make this kind of pasta every day, actually every night, because you know you are busy as a student. And you can start from you know with the with this kind of sauce, you making more sauces. If you add tomato, you, you can add fresh diced tomato right now. You can add uh, some mussels. And now we add fresh parsley, like this. Some people don't like cheese on this pasta. Actually, I, I do like cheese on this pasta. Like Parmesan or Pecorino or mixed up. But you know, we need to respect a little bit of the tradition today so we don't add any cheese on top. Okay, a little bit on, on, of the water. Like this. We get ready to serve the plate on the plate okay yeah one other thing you have to check is the bottom of the uh, of the pan it shouldn't be really uh, liquidy should be a little bit creamy like this so one of the mistakes that I usually see is serving pasta with a too liquidy uh, condiment or sauce okay let's go with this a big portion oh my god in Italy we you say mangi come un camionista you, will, you eat like a truck driver. I don't know if it's the same in the States, but in Italy when you go, when you want to eat properly, you know, like when pretty abundant, you know, heavy stuff, you basically check for a truck, you know, some, from trucks outside the restaurant. You see, ah, the truck drivers are here, so it must be good. That's a big portion, but I think it's nice. Yeah, tagliatelle hot pepper tagliatelle, tagliatelle peperoncino with aglio olio and peperoncino. I know you like hot stuff like this. Ready to go. Ciao.